Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Uh, I know on the blog uh, today that I said that this video would be coming by Monday, but you know what? I have some extra time. I'm going to knock it out today because I'm going to have a pretty crazy end of the week. Um, this is going to be part of our quick vid series, and my concept behind that is to provide you with quick you know, videos on smaller topics. This is going to be one of them. This video is going to be on using Tor with proxy chains to tunnel all of your connections for your software um, through a proxy uh, and through a onion routing network like Tor. Uh, and I'll put the links in the, in the description for the Tor website so you can read more about how onion routing works and all that good stuff. Um, good news for you is all you have to do is install Tor. Uh, proxy chains, which is what we're going to be using in conjunction with Tor, is already installed by default. Uh, in Kali Linux. So let's get started. We fire up our Kali Linux box here, which I've already got going on. Just close this out here. Open up a terminal as root. Type in apt get update as always, because we want to get the latest packages. And it should only take a minute here because I do this you know, two or three times a day. So, um, okay. So the next uh, command you want to enter in is apt get install tor, T O R. It's going to tell you what packages it's going to come with, Tor, GOIP, DB, and regular Tor here. So just click uh, in the terminal here and enter Y for yes to accept. It's going to download it, install it, get it going for you. And then I'll show you a quick configuration on how to do it, and we'll do a quick example with a web browser. Um, the only things you can't run proxy chains through uh, is... That, well, there's a couple of applications really, but um, the main one is Metasploit. You cannot run proxy chains with Metasploit, unfortunately. It kind of screws up with the database connection, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so you just can't do that, unfortunately. Um, but what you can do is you can tunnel all your other connections. You can tunnel Nmap scans, um, you know, any of the other scripts that uh, make you know outside connections to scans, uh, you know, like Websploit stuff like that. You can you know, configure it to work with all that, and it's very easy. I'll show you the commands. Okay, so moving along, um, what we want to do now is start Tor. So you just type in service uh, Tor and start. And you can see it starts it. If you want to ever check the status of it, you can just enter in status after service Tor, and it says Tor is running. Now, here's the situation. There's two things that I want to touch on quickly. You'll have to start Tor every time you want to use it. Okay, it's not going to start by default. If you guys really want, I'll probably, you know what, I'll probably do it anyway. I'll just write a quick script, um, and maybe I'll include some advanced features in there to like, you know, restarting Tor every X amount of seconds to pick up a new IP address. See, that's the thing. When you start Tor, Tor has a uh, limit um, of like, I think it's like 10 minutes uh, before it switches IP addresses and picks up a new proxy. Um, however, when you force a restart on Tor, or if you did like, um, kill dash one um, for the Tor uh, process ID, which basically just restarts Tor, um, it would pick up a new IP address. I'll write a script for that, guys. Don't worry about it. I'm going to make it as easy as possible on you. Anyway, so now Tor is running. By default, Tor listens on localhost 127.0.0.1 on port 9050 for any connections locally. Now, we're only running the Tor client. We are not running a Tor server. We do not want to run the Tor server only because we don't want other people using RIP to go out there and do random things, bad things, who knows, right? So moving along in the configuration, um, let's go over to proxy chains, which the script for proxy chains is located in ETC. So we got a CT, uh, CD over to ETC. Now you can do this in the, in the GUI and navigate over to this file, or you can do it in a command line text editor, um, VI or whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I like VI because I've been using it forever. So um, it's basically proxy chains. And you can use auto uh, complete here. Proxy chains conf is what you're looking for. Dot .conf is the configuration file. A couple things here. You can go through this and read this in your own leisure. Again, this is just a quick video. Not going to get into too much crazy detail about it. Quickly to go over it here, you have dynamic chains. And that's explained underneath it. It says dynamic. Each connection will be done via obtain proxies, all proxies chained in the order as they appear in the list. And the list is below where you would put all your proxies. So you can use Tor, you can use manual proxies if you went on the web and searched them. Um, you know, like it supports SOX4, SOX5, and HTTP proxies, right? So 
Obviously, it says it right there at the top anyway. Uh, and the good thing about proxy chains is it used to be, uh, I can have a feeling this is going to turn out to be a longer video than I wanted, but um, I, I feel the need to tell you this. When you use Tor um, or when you use other proxies, you have something that's called a DNS leak. So while your IP address has changed, any DNS servers, it's going to point back to your original DNS server. So if somebody wanted to sniff on your traffic or find out what your real IP address was, that's all they had to do was find your DNS leak uh, through the DNS servers you use. Now, ISPs generally um, log all of those connections. The good thing about proxy chains is it has the proxy fire uh, with DNS, and that's a separate script located in a separate directory. Um, if you want to do more reading on it, you can go to Proxy Chain's website, and I'll put that in the description as well, and you can change that uh, Proxy DNS Resolve um, config file. By default, it uses, who does it use? Uh, level 3 Communications uh, Open DNS Server. Um, so you are, in fact, when you're using Proxy Chain's with Tor, in fact, spoofing your DNS uh, as well, because you're going to their server to look up the you know the the name resolutions anyway getting into configuration dynamic chain um, it's going to go in the order they appear in a list so first one second one third one four, fourth one so on and so forth a strict chain is going to go uh, it says each connection will be done via chain proxies all proxies chained in the order as they appear in the list all proxies must be online to play in the chain now the difference between strict and dynamic is if you had dead proxies in here, which Tor is known to have, you know, some really slow proxies that won't respond in time. So dynamic is probably the best one to use for you, and that's what we're going to be using. But by default, in the proxy chains config, uh, strict chain is enabled. Now, all the proxies must be online in strict chain, so that means that if one proxy is not responding fast enough, none of it's going to work. The chain's going to break. So what we want to do is we just want to comment out with the pound sign here strict chains then we want to go up and uncomment dynamic chains and then we want to go down all the way to the bottom random chain don't worry about random chain you'll probably never ever use that a brief overview of that is each connection will be done via random proxy or proxy chain see the chain length which is right below that uh, and that, that specifies how many different proxies that you try out of your list now you have to have whatever you put in for chain length um, you know, if you put in four, you have to have at least four available proxies. Um, if you put in ten, you'd have to have ten. So, you know, you can do this if you wanted to, to do that, but if I write that script for you guys and it's going to switch up Tor to pick up a new IP address every time, it's the same idea as using random chain, but you don't have the conflicts that random chain comes with. Okay, so moving down here to the bottom, um, proxy DNS. Now, that's what we were just talking about before with the proxy DNS resolve. Uh, that's, which is a separate script included in here um, that uses a level 3 uh, communications open DNS servers. Okay, so leave that. It's uncommented by default, but leave that. So that's what prevents the DNS leaks. So moving down here, you can see the proxy list format. If you wanted to go ahead and see what the uh, syntax is for adding proxies here. So obviously it's the proxy type, SOX5 the address of the proxy, the port of the proxy, and then if you had like a username and password to connect to that proxy server, you would put it afterwards. So it's username and then password, right? So by default, um, it's set up for Tor on a SOX4 proxy on port 9050. However, we also want to add, uh, and, and Tor is not a HTTP proxy. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to install the other package called Privoxy, and I'm not really going to get into that because using proxy chains, we're going to tunnel it through the web interface anyway, and I'm going to show you how it works. So I just want to add the SOX5 just so we have it, and then same address and same port, 9050, right? So I'm just going to write my changes and save it. Now you don't have to restart any services here. If you do have an issue and for whatever reason the proxy chains aren't picking up, then restart Tor. Okay, so what we want to do now to issue the proxy chains to use Tor and use an application is a very simple command. It's proxy chains, the application you want to use. Okay, so in this case we're going to use IceWeasel and we want to navigate to the website, my favorite, to check IP addresses because it's kind of funny actually. But it does give you reverse DNS, which is very important to check that you're, uh, you're very anonymous online here. So 
So it's ipchicken.com. Right, so let's go ahead and surf out to there. And it should take a minute. Now, the downside of using Tor and proxies in general is they are kind of slow sometimes, right? Okay, so anyway, it says here that our current IP address, which this is not my default WAN IP address. I have static IP addresses for this network, and this is not it. I can assure you of that. I'm not going to give you my real IP address for obvious reasons. Um, not that you would probably be able to get into my network, but anyway, it's not worth advertising. Um, so 217.115.10.131. And if you look down here under advanced, it says name address tor31.anonymizer.ccc.de. So DE is usually Denmark, Germany. Um, to check, we want to go to another tool here and just open up another tab. It's dnsleaktest.com, and I will put that in the description as well. So once it connects to that, we'll go ahead and see. That the IP addresses should match up so long as it connects in the same amount of time. Uh, while you still have that proxied IP address from Tor. So here it's taking a little bit longer than normal. Okay, so it says 77.244, so that's obviously now different, you see, than 217.115. Uh, so let's refresh this page here on IP Chicken to see what our, there we go. So we picked up the same IP address, 77.244.254.228. That's the same thing that DNS uh, leak test dot com is providing us. It says it's in Austria. Obviously I am not in Austria. So check a uh, quick check for DNS leaks now. That should take about a minute or less depending on the speed of the proxy. And here you go. Again it says uh, with the proxy um, DNS resolve modifier uh, it's saying that we are coming from level 3 communications. And even though it says we're in the United States it doesn't really matter. If we were in China or Japan or Germany, it would still say we're coming from the United States because we're using the IP address of that open DNS server, right? So obviously this is not my ISP level three communications. That is not my name servers as I know them from my ISP. So we are completely hidden, okay? So that goes to show you how to use it with a browser. So um, again, I'll show you quickly how to pick up a new IP address if you wanted to go ahead and do that. Uh, just go into a terminal here and service tour help if I could spell restart and you can see it's going to stop the daemon it's going to start it again and it should have picked up a new IP address now let's refresh the IP chicken page and there we go we got a new IP address right so 96.47.226.19 and if we went back to here to home on dnsleaktest.com Okay, so you can see the IP addresses match up. We're actually back in the United States now. So let's click for DNS leaks again just to give you another example. And there you go. So now it says that we're at the Atlanta, uh, Georgia um, DNS server. So obviously things have changed a little bit, right? Now if you keep doing that, you'll notice that these, these results will be different. Some of them will be in you know, uh, California, some of them will be in Washington, it's awesome that it changes like that. So you're truly, truly, truly hiding your identity. Um, you know, you may want to use this even if you are browsing the web on, let's say, your Windows box, right? You can download the Windows installer for Tor, which comes with the Privoxy, the Vidalia uh, web, um, GUI interface to control it. Um, and you can effectively, with using uh, the Vidalia uh, or no, I'm sorry, with using the Privoxy uh, script, you can effectively hide your DNS as well uh, with that. Um, and that's the whole point of Privoxy. Um, so I recommend that even if you're surfing online, because lately, you know, I'm not going to get into politics, but, uh, you know, there's been a lot of people snooping around our privacy. And so I always recommend, even if you're just browsing Facebook or you're browsing Google or whatever, use a proxy, guys don't put yourself at risk, right? So, in any case, that does it for that uh, demonstration with the web browser. Now we can just close that out and you're going to see that it would automatically stop proxy chains. Now, if you wanted to look live at what proxy chains is actually doing in the terminal where you fired the proxy chains um, command from, you can see all of this information that it goes through here, right? So let's scroll all the way back up here to where we 
launched proxy chains, iceweasel, ipchicken.com. You can see it goes DNS request, the website that we're requesting. It goes uh, the chain from our local host here, out, denied. Okay, so then it picked up the next one, 4222253. That was the DNS resolver of uh, level three. I know that because I looked at the configuration file. Um, DNS response IP chicken 209.6827.16. So then we're trying to pick up more proxies here, and if you notice, that's what we're doing. And then it just keeps going down the line. So you can see that one of our proxies picked up in here, uh, another one in here, and that's how the Onion Routing Network works, guys. If you, like I said, if you want to read more about it, go to the Tours website. They got extensive documentation all on it. Um, so anyway. Let's go all the way down to the bottom here because I know it's easier to remember that way. Um, so you can see that we went to, it, sometimes it's going to say it does not exist, does not exist, that's fine. Don't worry too much about that. Um, but yeah, that's how proxy chains works. Now if you want to do like an Nmap scan through proxy chains, um, see I probably already have something set up here. Yeah, so if I wanted to scan like um, this address here, um, you just do proxy chains, nmap, and then your syntax, your switches for, for nmap. And then you can go through. And you're going to see that it's not automatically going to instantly start picking that up. But at some point, you'll see the chain start to come through. And that's only because it's a conflict between both services trying to put output to the screen at the same time. You are being anonymized, if you will, uh, when you're using it. It's just that you're not going to see the output of it, uh, the, the D chain output, right away. So anyway, you can see that we're making request out to 74208103159, and it's just doing some scans. Um, it will complete, it will return the information back to your screen. It's not like it's going to error out and die, and that's the beautiful thing because it will pick up another address if it errors out and, uh, errors out and dies. Um, so I'm not going to let the scan finish because honestly it doesn't doesn't make sense to. But in any case, you can use it with that. Um, you can use it with other scripts, like if you want to use it with HPing, if you want to use it with, or, or HPing 3, I'm sorry, uh, or if you want to use it with, um, you know, any other scripts that, uh, you know, you're going outside to make a connection, a web scanner, like a web scarab or anything like that. You can use it with that. Um, the only gotcha is that in some applications, it requires a SOX 4A proxy, uh, and you'd have to set up Privoxy for that. But uh, if you're launching most of the applications and scripts that go out to the web, this is your this is your guy right here. So that's a quick vid from us guys. Um, I hope to you know in the meantime of making the extraordinarily long in-depth videos, I hope to keep cranking out uh, you know some quick vids to get you guys uh, you know new and fresh content uh, sooner and and faster um, to keep you guys interested. So and keep you guys learning. Uh, so that's gonna do it for this quick vid, guys. I will see you on maybe Monday probably Monday, uh, if not sooner. Uh, we're going to begin working on the next video. I'm still trying to get my virtual machine situation set out. Um, I did get uh, Windows Server 2003 with a legit serial key from a friend of mine that had a corporate license um, that gave it to me to use for demonstration purposes. So that's good. And in the next video, we'll be giving them a shout out as well. Um, anyways, guys, uh, keep keep up the good work. Uh, like, subscribe, share the videos, share the website, share the blog, um, you know, share the Facebook page, and uh, keep posting back feedback. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video, guys.